The integration of the BrahMos-A air-launched cruise missile with India's Sukhoi Su-30 MKI is, in my opinion, one of the best decisions India has made. The missile was originally designed for land and naval platforms, but the adaptation for air launch grants the Indian Air Force not only added muscle, but also extended reach. It allows India to strike targets deep inside adversary territory, while keeping its aircraft outside immediate threat zones. What many people don't realize is that the missile also makes the aircraft more capable against targets at sea. Many land targets sit inside dense, layered integrated air defense systems with fighters, long-range SAMs, and electronic warfare support. At sea, individual ships rely on self-contained long-range SAMs, medium and short-range SAMs, radar and CIWS, but they lack the breadth of air cover and supporting networks that land IEDS provide. There are various flexible tactics aircraft can use to overwhelm naval targets, such as launching from beyond the horizon or outside a ship's effective detection zones. Even though the missile is commonly quoted with a range of 500 plus kilometers, that is not its immutable range, it can be much higher under favorable launch conditions. The Su-30 MKI has a combat radius of about 1,500 kilometers. That normally means a round-trip mission, fly to the target, perform the mission, and return to base. This range can be further increased in mid-flight with aerial refueling with a range of about 500 to 550 kilometers as the missile's baseline performance, but that number is not constant. It can sometimes be lower and can also be significantly higher. Launching the BrahMos A from an aircraft like the Su-30 MKI at high altitude and high speed provides a significant performance boost. This is a fundamental principle of air-launched missiles. The physics behind it are straightforward, a missile's total range is determined by its total energy, which is a combination of its kinetic and potential energy. In simple terms, when the BrahMos A is released from a Su-30 MKI flying at Mach 0.8 to 1.2, it already has substantial initial velocity. That means the missile's own booster and ramjet engine don't have to expend fuel to accelerate from zero. This conserved energy directly translates to a longer range. Launching from an altitude of around 8 to 10 kilometers places the missile in a thinner atmosphere. In that environment there is significantly less air density and therefore less drag. This reduces the energy the missile's engine needs to overcome air resistance, allowing it to maintain supersonic speed for a longer duration. The aircraft's velocity is often sufficient to prime the ramjet engine, allowing it to ignite more quickly. This could allow the missile to be designed with a smaller, or, in some designs, entirely eliminated, booster stage, reducing weight and the propellant required for initial acceleration. The missile's ramjet engine, which is an air-breathing engine, is highly efficient at supersonic speeds. By using the aircraft's energy, the BrahMos A's own fuel is conserved for the crucial cruise and terminal phases of flight. So, what is the practical reach of the combo? From northern Indian bases, all of Pakistan is covered, as well as Afghanistan and portions of Central Asia. Large swathes of western and central China, including Tibet, and adjoining provinces such as parts of Xinjiang and Qinghai, also fall within the band. Bangladesh and the northern bay of Bengal coastline are covered as well. From western Indian bases, the entire Pakistan theater and much of its Arabian Sea approaches are covered. Large parts of eastern Iran and the Gulf approaches, reaching toward Oman and the Muscat area, fall into the envelope. The northwest Arabian Sea and Gulf of Oman are well within reach, offering good coverage of sea lines of communication and shipping lanes. From southern Indian bases, the entire Sri Lanka and Maldives archipelagos and wide portions of the Bay of Bengal and Andaman Sea are covered. There is eastward reach into Myanmar, Thailand, and parts of Malaysia and Indonesia. From eastern Indian bases, Bangladesh, Myanmar, much of Thailand, and parts of Laos and Vietnam are reachable. Portions of southern China and the South China Sea may fall into the optimistic end of the envelope depending on launch profile. So the missile's reach is significant. From central or southern Indian bases, Su-30 MKIs equipped with BrahMos A can threaten targets across Pakistan, 
parts of China and key Indian Ocean regions. This enables India to project power over vital maritime choke points, including the Strait of Hormuz and the Malacca Strait, strengthening both maritime security and regional deterrence. Coverage of inland areas of Pakistan and southern China also enhances India's ability to prepare for two-front scenarios without exposing fighter squadrons to prolonged risk. Comparatively, the BrahMos A on Su-30 MKI provides advantages over regional competitors. Pakistan's ROD-2 and China's J-20 are capable platforms, but the combination of high-speed, precision and air-launch mobility distinguishes BrahMos A. Supersonic speed reduces enemy reaction time, while precision strike capability ensures effective neutralization of high-value targets. Potential extended-range variants, possibly aided by mid-air feeling, could further amplify reach, positioning India among a select group of nations with long-range air-launch supersonic missiles.